JPTV3000 here with David. David, man, appreciate that, bro. Thank you for your time. Without further ado, man, where are you from and how did you end up in North Dakota? Well, I'm, uh, I'm from Jersey originally. Uh, I ended up here because uh, I left home at 17 and uh, my best friend moved out here when I was uh, about 15 years old and he told me, yeah, I make $15 at a gas station. And I was like, well, that ain't bad because I was making about $500 a month uh, working full time. So that was, and that full time, that was more than the apartments in the hood were. So I was like, shit, I gotta leave because <laughs> I didn't have a home. So I, uh, I ended up coming out here to the gas station for a while and then I, I ended up in the oil field and life turned around real quick you know within two years you know I started the oil field got a new vehicle got a wife got a kid now um, you know I'm married as well you know life moved real quick but uh, the best word of advice would be is like you know if you got a family and stuff make sure you choose a job that fits their lifestyle you know what I mean a lot of these guys come out here I've seen so many guys relationships get ruined by you know like the oil field like the rig is a great job, you know, you'll make easily over 100000 a year on that rig, you know, but you're two weeks off, two weeks on at the best, and you're missing 50% of your life right there. You know, it's better to work 80 to 100 hours a week than it is to be gone for two weeks at a time, because I've seen so many guys just, you know, end up losing their wife and kids, you know, and they're on somewhere else at this point, you know. Yeah, and they just kind of, kind of grow apart almost. Oh, yeah, well, you're two weeks gone, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. that's half the year. Yeah, that's it's exactly half the year, you know. And even when you're doing 80, 90 hours a week or whatever, you know, you're home for three hours a night, you know, at best or whatever. You're and there's awake nothing for you can really do with that. It's just, okay, There's nothing take you can do, but it's, it's better than not being home at all. Yeah. It really is, because just being present there means you're still there, you know what I mean? But once you go away and then you come back, it's you're going away and coming back. It's not you're staying here, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, there ain't no money worth losing something important like that for us, for sure. Man, I'm I'm happy that you're doing good, bro. And the fact that you're here, that's that's evident that okay, you you're serious about being successful. Because oh, I, for sure. I tell a lot of people, man, hey, give Howard Quest, Command Center, give them a try. You know, just go out to work, just make sure you 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 do the best job you could do, just as if it was your full time job. And I know plenty of people that have got on full time with places just because they went there and they 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 did their job. Oh, for sure. Like this place right here, you know, um, almost every day you can get a job pretty easily. You know, yeah. and if you're between jobs, you can get set up in one day, and then you're out working the next day. Yeah. It's good. You get paid every single day. You know, I'm just doing this because I just came back from vacation. I quit my last job, so I'm like, hey, this is how I'm planning to find my next job right here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know, everyone that's looking for these temp guys, they're looking for workers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you just work well enough, they're like, hey, just come back in on Monday. Yeah. You know, and that's how you find a decent job. And pretty much the worst paying job blue collar out here is $20 an hour. Yeah, you know I mean, that's minimum 40000 a year, but that's just straight hours. And ain't no one working straight yeah. hours out yeah, here. Yeah, ain't nobody working those straight 40 hours. Because somebody else, they were yeah. like, they were asking on, on my YouTube channel, hey, is it possible for somebody to make $15 an hour with 60 hours a week? You can make the fifteen dollars an hour. The sixty hours a week at fifteen, I don't know what you're gonna be doing. But yeah, it's harder. The only place kind of like that is Menards. They do yeah, like fifteen to seventeen. Because yeah. I used to work in the back over there. You know what I mean? I was getting paid seventeen an hour, and that yeah. wasn't bad. You know, it was like yeah, because like Menards is twenty five hundred a month yeah. or three thousand a month. Yeah. And now it's like after I joined the welfare, that's a check. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's another thing. Like once you went from uh, once you went from. 500 a week, 1,000 a week, yeah. 1,500 a week. Yeah, it keeps it's going. Like, hey, bro, it's like, yeah. hey, ain't no going back to regular life, man. Oh, that's for sure, you know. Oh, another tip of advice, do not be a Williston boy. Don't be making this money and assume it's around forever. I got a nice truck back there, but, <coughs> you know, I can still afford that working at Walmart, you know what hey, I'm bro, saying? Hey, bro, dude, I'm happy you said that. <laughs> I'm happy you said that. A lot of these guys, they come out here and they're just like, oh, I'm working on the rig, I'm making a hundred grand a year or whatever, and they buy this eighty, ninety thousand dollar $90,000 truck. And what always happens is, you know, you can get hurt so easily. I broke my arm in January, you know what I mean? And I was out for six months because I broke my arm. And, you know, I was making straight hours compared to when I was doing 89 hours a week. It's less than half my paycheck. Yeah. But, you know, because I kept my my normal bills low as in a 40 hour week, I could still pay all my bills. Yeah. I gotta keep that truck. 
Otherwise, I wouldn't be having it. That's thinking ahead, yeah. bro. Well, a lot of these guys, they get that $89,000 truck, and it's like they're paying $1,500 a month for <laughs> It's really, it's because I pay $700 for that truck right there. That's $700 with insurance. And these guys are paying $1,500 a month, you know, with their insurance and stuff. And it's like, look, if you're not having, if you don't have a job, that brings in at least $2,500. Which means you got to be making at least 20 in hours. Well, I think it's more than that straight time, but still, like, if you get hurt or you want to leave this place, the oil field goes away and it comes back all the time. You still got to pay that truck, though. You still got to pay that truck. <laughs> Man. You know what I mean? Money's worth the same everywhere else, you know what I mean? But if you got an $80,000 loan here, it's $80,000 in Maryland, too. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, these guys don't get that. If they have to leave their job or their boss pisses them off or they can't do the work no more, you're still stuck yeah. with that stuff. I mean, how long have you been up here in North Dakota? Um, I went away for a year, but I guess I've I lived in North Dakota for two years total. You know, but I love it here. Were you, were you up here in 14 or? No, I came up here uh, when I was 17, so that would be 15. I came up here in 15 and it was dead. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty dead back then. It was a ghost town in the winter. Dude, in 14, like the trucks you see here now, like, oh no, bro. You, yeah. You, in 14, man, you saw some stuff you were like, really? Yeah. Really? For sure. But I'm, I'm slowly <coughs> starting to see that come back. I'm yeah, seeing, you're seeing like, it, I'm, like, I'm you know. It come back. Out here, every guy that's uh, working in the oil field, they got a decent truck, you know. They, they don't have to have a decent one. I've seen plenty with crappy ones, but, you know, yeah. everyone's got a decent vehicle. Because yeah. it's something you should have in America. We should always have a decent, reliable mode of transportation, you know what I'm saying? I think um, part of what it is is everybody figured, okay, we get all these decent trucks. We could yeah. we could drive we could drive the energy market right back up and we keep yeah. turning off all this diesel, bro. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. Because I'm kind of the same way, like... I'll leave my truck running. I don't care. Let that gas go back well, up. Well, especially in 15 or 14, 15, the gas was cheap as hell. It was like 250. Yeah. So I was like, I didn't even add into my monthly expenses. I was like, fuck it. I spend less than $100 a month on gas. I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That was like like less than five or like ten percent of my paycheck at the no, it's like five percent of my paycheck. So who cares? I mean, I spend more than that on food. <laughs> but bro, look, just 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 keep the same mindset. Keep your same focus and oh, keep your sure. same determination, man. You're going to come out ahead. And that's just like anybody else who may be watching this video. You know, go ahead, bro. Give them some more wisdom, man. Break it down, bro. Well, uh, when you're making this money, you know, it's easy to blow it. Get what you need. And, you know, rule of thumb is save 25%. Try to pay off your debts and live off the rest. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm doing right now because I got to pay off that truck loan or whatever, you know. So I pay that loan. Then I throw in what? Like another 250 500 on it? It's got to shave off some time, little by little, you know what I'm okay. saying? What's, the what's, sooner you're out of debt, the better you are, because guess what? If I just miss a few payments on that thing, even if I'm just about to find a job, they're going to take my truck, and I lose everything I put into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, you don't own nothing unless you fully paid for it. Anything yeah, exactly. you got a loan on, you don't own. Your house, you don't own. That's a liability. Yeah. It is not an asset. Man, you know when what I'm you, saying? When, you, <laughs> when you're starting your, your, your uh, financial business as, as being a financial advisor, man, when you plan yeah. on getting that started? Oh, um, I don't, I don't plan on doing financial advisory, but I do plan on doing a lot more investing in the future. You know, um, last year I made $1,000 just in the stock market. You know, just kind of flipping around, just fooling around with it. You know what I mean? I spent probably 2000 to make that 1000 yeah. But, you know, that's a pretty good return, 50%. Yeah, on top of yeah, it. I mean, over 12 months, that's not bad. But over 12 months, I was only about, like, what, like, who, like, just under two hundred dollars a month, I was putting into it. And just keep building. Exactly. Just keep building. Well, you know, if I made fifty percent return and I put in a hundred grand, that's fifty thousand dollars. Exactly. You know, but the main thing I love about Wilson, though, is just the fact of uh, no matter what job you get out here, you're making more than the average American. You know what I mean? Even working at uh, Walmart, you're making more than the average American. That says a lot. You know, a lot of people have to work a lot harder for the money they get, and this this place has good money. I feel like this place is what it should be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like right. like 40 to 60 hours a week, it should provide the living we got here. You know, where you can have a decent vehicle, you can pay your bills, and you can yeah. still save some money. It ain't like that no more. You know, it used to be like that 40 hours a week. You could do all the things you needed to and still save some. Yeah. It ain't like that. You know what I mean? So, Wilson's keeping it right. <laughs> yeah, because I'm from Mississippi, and it's like, you know, 40 hours a week there, uh, a minimum wage is like seven dollars. Exactly. That's I was living in Jersey and it was like eight forty an hour. Oh, you good, dude? But, uh, you guys are all good. We just yeah. chill. <laughs> but uh, 
Like you saying, what, what are you saying about New Jersey? It was like I was working for like eight twenty or eight thirty an hour or whatever, but the taxes are like forty percent. Well, what are you gonna do with eight twenty, bro? Yeah, exactly. You can't, you can't do nothing with eight twenty. I was working at Dunkin' Donuts back then, so that says something. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I I hear people when they talk about minimum wage ought to be raised up to fifteen. That sounds good. Yeah. But if McDonald's if if McDonald's has to raise it up to fifteen dollars an hour, yeah. Well, just you see what, what this place pays. I think thirteen starting off, and you see how much business they have to bring in to pay thirteen dollars an hour. Exactly. People want these, you know, this these nice wages, which I understand. But the thing is, unless you have enough money pulling it back in, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I think, I think it was Japan was the country when they had an economic crisis. They were going through um, a depression. During lunch, everyone would go out and eat because just putting that money back into your lunch meal. It's putting more money back in the community. More money in the community, more money being spent, the more money's being made. Yeah. You know it's what I'm saying? It's a circle. Yeah, if, if you don't cycle it, it just gets stowed away. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's and one of the hardest things to do in the Depression is to keep spending money. And people want yeah. that 15 an hour, but hey, yeah. how much you want that Big Mac and them fries to be? Yeah, exactly. That's true, because it is expensive more. Yeah. It's more expensive out here than everywhere else, but yeah. hey, I still get to save money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Man, you want to give any shouts out to anybody? Uh, shout out to my wife. <laughs> anybody back you. home in New Jersey? Uh, no, I don't like those people no more. I moved out here, man. <laughs> I left that life behind me, man. I, I made new you, friends. Hey, shout hey, out to all the people I still live in town with, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about, man. You're moving forward. Yeah, exactly. Man, appreciate that, bro. Man, right, thank you for you. what you're doing. And thank you for your time, man. And um, hopefully everything works out. And just, you know, just stay motivated to keep getting what you've been getting. And Hell yeah, man. Hi, my name's Phaedra. I am department manager of menswear in the North Williston Walmart. Today we are going to talk about some of the winter gear that we have for men out there and the workwear FRs that we carry here. Here in menswear I carry the non-FR wall coveralls, the FR wall non-insulated coveralls, and the wall shirt coats in the sizes you want. Then I go I also have Wall Wrangler at FR jeans. Henley t-shirt FRs, my crew FR t-shirts, and then for a more dressy, I have the FR button down along with some thermals that are almost just like the Under Armour. Over here I have my thermals. I have the classic thermals in the crew and Henley tops and then the bottoms and cream, gray and black. Then I also got some breathables that are a little bit more in price. Then I got the Russell which is compa not compared to the Fruit of the Loom classics. They're a little bit thinner, more silky. Then I have your work socks which are thermal acrylic steel toe then over here I have more of your base layer George just like the Russell different brand and then at the down here I have your winter work gloves I they're rated for the cold weather I have the mittens the gloves and then leather ones and cloth and fabric okay on this all we have our Dickies work pants non FR. They are the flex. We have cargo. They come in different colors like gray, blue, tan, black. We have the cargo flex. We have just your good basic old pants. We have jeans. And we have t shirts that go all the way up to 4X tall. Then we have our dig. Uh, khaki style in the cargo we carry your work shirts non-fr painters pants and the bibs and coveralls in dickies over in my men's jean section i have fleece line jeans i have them in camo black khaki and over here i carry them in the jean material for 24.97 everybody loves them over here in my shirt pad we have the George Henleys. They are the thermal style material but they are warmer than the regular thermals that I carry. We have our bison boots made by Survivor in a different variety of sizes. 
We also carry the Jason's uh, steel toe made by Survivor as well. And then we carry the Grizzly, also a steel toe. We also have them in ver various sizes. We also have, uh, also made by Survivor, we have uh, this professional series, Herman. And then we also carry, also by Survivor, the Steel Toe Waterproof Breaker. We also have the Brahma Steel Toe. And we also carry the Steel Toe in the Wheat Bravo. We have uh, various sizes on the Alpha. We have it in brown and black, also steel toe. And we carry the Wheat Bravo, different texture than the other ones, also steel toe. We have them in brown and black. These right here are my favorite oil field boots. I usually buy two pair a year. And for me, it's comfort. These are the most comfortable boots, period. I bought $200 boots, I bought $300 boots, I bought $400 boots. But these boots for $59.76, you cannot beat. They're, they're oil resistant, they are steel toe, and Coleman makes a spray that's for them that helps them to also be waterproof and I always spray it on them and it makes them last longer also. And they have them in this kind, they also have a low ankle, but low ankle steel toes is really not what you want on location. You want lace up something that's high ankle so that they don't come off your foot very easily. And if you happen to step in mud, melting snow, water, whatever it may be, you also have that protection also. And you can find more of these products here at the Walmart in Williston, North Dakota. And we'll take a look at some other products that this store has for you. What is up, y'all? And today we're in the sock selection here at Walmart. And I wanted to bring up a couple of things. These right here are some that I use personally. The Dr. Scholl's. I like these because it's kind of a compression sock for your, like for your, your calves and your feet and stuff. That's why I like these. They are eight bucks, but this right here is absolutely worth eight bucks. And they have a couple other selections. Some of these I've tried and I like, but I know that pair, and they got a couple other pairs that I like, but you can find all of these right here at Walmart. Try them out for yourself, see which one is what you're looking for because when it comes to winter you want something that's going to keep your feet warm but also it's not going to sweat you want something that's moisture wicking you heard terry talk about that in one of my other videos so let's go take a look at a couple more other products this is michael over in the sporting goods department over here in sporting goods we all we have the section of coolers and in the coolers we have the heavy duty ozark trail coolers which are very comparable to yeti at a fraction of the cost we also have hunting apparel and winter winter weather apparel up to and including hats and gloves and the long johns and thermal underwear that you can wear underneath your fr equipment hi my name is chris with the walmart in williston north dakota today we're going to be talking about our automotive care center some of the things you'll find here are things like wipers these are some of the best wipers you can get for winter one of the ways to tell is by looking at the beam, no holes, no place for ice to go. These will clean your window without gathering up a whole lot of ice inside. We also have windshield washer fluid. The best stuff for our temperatures in the winter, it's very extreme here, would be the stuff that you see is purple. Uh, Rain-X or Supertech, either one. I've used these in negative 40 before, they stay liquid. An example of a wiper you probably wouldn't want to get in the winter would be this. You can see the holes in it. This allows water to get in. Ice can foul up your windshield wiper. And as we're looking at the windshield wipers, some of the best ones we can get would be like these Michelins and these Rain-X silicone Enduras. They both are the beam construction, so no ice can get in between. We also have some coolant. You would think that you probably don't need this during the winter, but you'd be very surprised. Um, if you notice, when you turn on your heat, nothing comes out but cold air. You might need some of this stuff. So some of the other things we have, is a product called heat. Um, hot, cold temperatures can develop condensation inside the fuel tank. This is water. What this stuff is, is alcohol. 
that basically bonds with water. Keeps your fuel system, fuel lines from freezing. This is also pretty much the same thing except it has a fuel injector cleaner added as well if you want that extra cleaning. For diesels, always a fun time. We've got Lucas Anti-Gel. This is the stuff you use on a regular basis to keep your fuel liquid. Otherwise that diesel will kind of gel up on you, especially when we get to like negative 20, negative 30. When you are completely gelled up and you're having a problem, this is the stuff you're gonna be going after. Diesel 911. This is starting fluid. Anybody who owns a diesel probably very familiar with this can. This will help start your engine on really cold temperatures when she doesn't really want to start at all. Uh, for the summertime, we have also got AC rechargers. Some have gauges, some don't. If you have your own gauges, you know, you can use your own stuff. And these are our oil filters. Um, for Fram, the best ones you can get are the XG. This is a full synthetic filter. We also have Mobile One filters, K&N, some OE Toyota and Mopar filters. We also have Supertech filters for on a budget. AC Delco for GM, Motocraft for Ford. A whole array of air filters. K&Ns are lifetime filters. You just clean them and put them right back. The rest are disposable paper filters. Uh, we also have, of course, the Fram XG air filter. This is a full synthetic filter. And then we have our selection of cabin filters. If you ever notice that dank smell in your car, you might need to change this. And then that brings us to batteries. We have a whole selection of batteries for most vehicles. Um, you'll see that they go from like the value power, which is a fairly low coal cranking amp, to the Everstar Max, which is a higher coal cranking amp. And you can even go to the AGM, which is a gel battery, specifically made for the cold. Usually has a much higher cold cranking amp and will last longer in the cold. Gasoline engine motor oils. Personally, I prefer Mobile One myself. Um, when choosing a viscosity, always check your owner's manual to choose the best viscosity for your vehicle. You may actually find that there are different viscosities you could use based on temperature. A 520 or a 020 or a 530 or a 030. Always check your owner's manual to make sure that the viscosity is correct for the vehicle. Other motor oils we have is Royal Purple, another full synthetic. We also have Valvoline full synthetic, Castrol full synthetics. We also have high mileage oils. These are usually synthetic blend oils, uh, the mixture of conventional and synthetic oil. And then of course we also have our conventional oils, which is just dinosaur oil, just basic oil. And of course we have our SuperTech, and SuperTech comes in a conventional, a high mileage semi-synthetic, and a high mileage full synthetic, and a regular full synthetic. So everything you can find everywhere else, you can also find in SuperTech. Then we come to our diesel oils. If you have a turbo diesel, like most of them are today, I would strongly recommend a 540 or a synthetic oil for your turbo diesel. We also have 1540 conventional, 1540 synthetic Rotella, 1030 synthetic blend Rotella, and of course, just conventional diesel oil. For all diesels after 2008, you're gonna need DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. We've also got grease, this helps with your ball joints, your tie rod ends, pitman arm, idler arm. A lot of these do have grease zerks and this is the stuff you'll want to use. This is our 7590 full synthetic gear, gear oil. We also have an invalvoline. And this is a brand new tire. And as we can see, we have about 15-30 seconds of tread on this. 
Now, once it gets down to about 3 30 seconds of tread, that's pretty much the end of your tire, and you will definitely notice it when you're out on the road. So once you get down to that far, it's definitely time to get some new tires because this is a lot better than this. And those are truck tires. These are our selections of car tires. Um, they usually come brand new with much less tread. They're cars. So where's that one was 15, 30 seconds. This brand new is only 9, 30 seconds. But once again, same thing holds true. Once you get down to 3, 30 seconds, it's definitely time for some new tires. So maybe you didn't find what you were looking for in our in-stock tires. You can always go to walmart.com. You can choose from a wide selection of tires from hand-cooked Dynapros to Turo Trailblades. You can even get more Goodyears. Some of our additional services include the fuel system service. We also do a headlight restoration, where that cleans up those nasty headlights. We also do a chassis lubrication. We'll install the battery after you buy it. We also have a non-corrosion battery treatment. And once again, my name is Chris. Come see us at Walmart. I've got to get back to work right now. Get these vehicles out of here. Y'all have a good day. I'm JPTV3000 here with Austin, which my family sometimes refers to me as Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob, man, what, what brought you to North Dakota, man? Well, my brother offered me a job, and that job seems to have fallen through already. I've been here since uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, last Friday was my first day. I was helping out a man named Jake with pulling weeds. Some tall, tall weeds by hand at <laughs> first. Uh, today I did a little bit of hose building. And But what really brought me up beforehand, my past experiences, I, I tried my hand at the Army. Uh, last year didn't work and uh, a year before that I uh, for like almost about six months out of the year I worked in Alaska capital and before that I was moving from town to town we're looking for work wherever I could find it I came up to North Dakota not because my brother offered but at the same time I didn't have to go through the usual requirements of speaking Spanish fluent Spanish have a good understanding of the language in, t in its entirety, but my ability to speak foreign language isn't very strong. So I, I always went, I was always determined to find steady work, no matter how far it took me. And you know what, bro? That's a, that's a, that's a tool in itself to be able to. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna make it work. That's determination. That's 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 goal orient, goal orientated. And have you been able to find success up here in North Dakota? Uh, so far, this place, uh, hiring place, or Manson, as everyone promote, uh, still refers to it as, has offered, gotten me a job. Uh, I got another job. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm able to re go to the same location tomorrow at 8 a.m. rather than 10 a.m. that is today. So if it turns out good, I got a job there. I keep doing good and keep working. Yeah. Just gotta put those hours in and make sure I bring fluids in with me. That's yeah. the big one right there. Yeah, yeah. Bring your own water. Bring your lunch. Bring your own gloves. Steel toes. Pretty, pretty much. Have you worked in oil field before? I've tried for seven years. Dude, if you can be at the job fair, bro. Seriously, if you can be at the job fair, be at the job fair. I, I'm gonna try and make it. And, and if you can't, uh, just go on my YouTube channel and. Uh, my my last most recent video I've got the information on there I may go back and edit some of the description and put links and stuff to it mm -hmm. and you can apply for the companies just look uh, BNG is one of them uh, MBI they're out of Wofford City but if you got dependable transportation MBI might still have housing but, but I'm not sure about that no I have a, a apartment I just got last week yeah so so you kind of set on Williston uh, I don't want to like I, I'm willing to drive but at the same time if it's yeah. If it's like act real early in the morning, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get up. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> but yeah, it's a. Uh, I'm I'm all for. There's a lot of work going around Williston right now. Yeah, a lot of work. Uh, was on Friday, they were in a kind of a panic because uh, they didn't have enough workers. Yeah. 
They're calling everyone. Everyone's busy doing something. Yeah. You know, so you know, so keep that in mind because a lot of people don't realize that even working here, you know, you'll you'll go out to work with somebody. You do a good job. They'll be like, hey man, we want we want you specifically to come back. Like when I went worked at the airport, they were like, we want you to come back. I'm like, I, I will, but I'm on my off days. And I don't I'll work every day. I did that in Alaska, Sunday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. So, <laughs> every day. That's it, bro. Just stay focused. Come to work, be on time, do your job, mind your business, don't harass your co man. That's yep. all people look for. Yeah, that's how Muhammad got hired on down there at the location. Uh, yeah. He, uh, he's officially been working there for two months. Yeah. He was... Oh, go, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna ask you got any advice for anybody that's thinking about coming up here? Uh, if you have to travel far like I did from California, make sure you have enough money to pay for housing, food, water, and gas. If you are driving your, I prefer you drive your own vehicle because bus transportations, you you can get robbed on those. An incident happened a few months back where my aunt was on the bus and got robbed. So try to, like, if you can, take your own means of transportation because at the same time, it could also act as a house. Yeah. If things get serious enough and if you're really desperate for cash like I am, yeah, good old student loans attacking me on all corners. <laughs> just give them time. Just, just one step after another, bro. Just, hey, today's Wednesday. You know, just keep coming to work, and then at least this way you're getting some money, some money coming in, and so it's not like the the world is taking over versus you being in control. Mm -hmm. So you know, but but from what I can tell, man, you 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 look and seem like you got a winning a winning attitude about you. Just keep going, just keep pushing, man. Just like I just uh, made a hundred bucks for six hours of work, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Exactly, I mean, just like Nick. <laughs> Nick is also in one of my uh, my YouTube uh, interviews, and you know he, he came up here from California. He did the exact same thing you did. You'll see. But uh, man, you want to give any shout outs to anybody back at home? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to my mom, who helped me with housing when uh, she helped keep me from being homeless, and she helped keep my brother from being homeless too. So I want to give her a shout out. I'm giving one to my nieces. They know who they are. So <laughs> there's too many to name. <laughs> well, man, appreciate that, man. Thank you for your time, bro, and hopefully everything works out. Uh, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Uh, stay out of trouble, you know. And the money is worth it. Exactly. Trust so, so with that, Easy, fam. All right, man. All right, bro. Hey, I, mean, I might end up putting both of y'all together, man, and making like one video out of okay. it. Okay. Okay, that'll work. All right. Prop it out. But uh, JPTV3000 here with Austin or Uncle Bob? Austin or Uncle Bob, sign it off. Um, here's a train station. Um, this will run. Actually, you can go all the way from New York City to here and all the way to the West Coast. Um, this is one of the spots. One of the better stops. Um, we walk across the street here, we can walk through got a little park here next to the train station uh, it's very nice and they've got some old steam engines from way back in the day um, this is one of the nice things about Williston is the city really takes care of our public spaces I think this is a private one that's owned by the rail link but if you go up farther north of here through Main Street um, there's another park and then that's right next to uh, 2nd Avenue and you could even go up farther past town and you'll end up going to Spring Lake Park. Spring Lake Park is a beautiful spot that you can, they have a dedicated swimming area off the Missouri River, a little muddy. Um, they have places for dogs, they have Frisbee Golf, they have all sorts of dog parks out there. It's really nice. It's a really nice area. Um, as much as the oil field gets a bad rap for a lot of things, it's not the boom anymore. North Dakota has grown as a culture and as a, as a state and really, really grown in the way that we've become more of a community no matter where you've come from. It's a community of people from all walks of life from absolutely everywhere. 
you have people from Alabama, you got people from Montana, where I'm from, you have people from Puerto Rico, you have people from Mexico, and we're all here, and we're all here to make money, but we're all here to have a life, and that's what we're here for, you know, so that's just kind of the culture here. Yes, everywhere's got its issues, but I think we're building on that. For your time, appreciate that. Ted, man, how'd you get to North Dakota, bro? Oh, well, I uh, got on the Marine Corps, and I went and farmed for the family for a little bit um, last summer. And I came out here in the fall, and I've been working out here ever since. What's, what's some of the things that you've seen since you've been up here? In what way? Okay, let's start from the, 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 the beginning and work our way up to now, as far as... When I got out here, I came out here with a friend um, who works for a fishing tool shop down in Wofford City, Legacy Tool and Rental. Um, name's Lonnie. Uh, he got me a job, well, he didn't even get me a job. He brought me out here, he let me live in his place, and I just went and worked in the shop for about two weeks, sweeping floors and making sure I was showing everybody that I could work. Um, I ended up getting a job with the sister company of Legacy Tool and Rental, uh, Johnny Lane Consulting, um, starting doing hot shots and driving truck. Uh, now I'm still working for the same company, working uh, construction. I'm a foreman here, uh, so ahead, bro. built my way up. Go ahead, bro. Got here from nothing. Came out here with a dollar in my pocket, my dog, a rifle, and a bag of clothes, and now I'm here. I don't know. What's well, mean? I think everybody has that in them. Yeah. I think a lot of people out here do. It's a hard place to live, especially during the winter time yeah. when it's negative 40 with, you know, negative 60 with wind chill. Cause negative 40, man, nobody's coming outside unless you gotta come outside. Nobody, nobody's mingling, nobody's, there, there ain't none of that nice, hey, like, like this, like yesterday sucked all day long and finally the sun came out. But man, go ahead, bro. Well, I mean, no matter how bad it sucks, yeah. I mean, you do have good people out here. Yeah, you gotta make some good with bad, but that's everywhere you're gonna go in life. That's, that's just part of life. But you meet good people everywhere. And there's a lot of really good people out here in Williston, and there's family, but it's a good place to come live and learn about life. Yeah. And learn that there's different walks of life from everybody. Yeah. You know, different strokes for different folks. You know. I and mean, then since yeah. you said that, uh, do you have any advice for people that are thinking about coming up here? I would say, come out here, learn a good work ethic if you may not think you have one. If you do have one, come learn from other people. There are so many older folks out here that are willing and ready to teach younger people. No matter where you come from, we don't care. You know, most of most of my company is is felons. I'm not one, but most of my company is felons, and we accept you like anybody else. We don't care. You're willing to work. You're willing to be a good man or a good woman. Come work for us. We don't care. And that's what's great about this place. It's hey, keep. Like I tell people all the time, come to work, be on time, do your job, mind your business, don't harass your coworkers. Nobody cares about anything else as long as you don't bring it to work and it becomes a work problem. Absolutely, you know? and you know if if you end up having tro problems farther down the line after you're here, more times than not, we everyone here is going to be willing to help. You. As long as you worked hard, showed up, and you were a good person, we could not care less. Exactly. All right, y'all, JPTV3000. I'm here with Jerry Nickerson. Very cool guy. Uh, we've actually met before one time, and uh, we both out on, on on the same location in Watford City. Very cool guy, one, one, of his hard, one of the hardest working people out here in the Bakken. I mean, man, I mean, hell, man, you stay working. <laughs> but uh, Been here two years doing it. Yeah, so, so you know, he, he's got the experience. You know, he's... He sees the up. He he's seen the ups, the downs. You know, he's he's he he's seen quite a bit of it. So so I really wanted to get his input on on um on what brought you up here to North Dakota. I came up here to North Dakota two years ago because I met a gentleman that owned a roustabout company up here. Yeah. And he said what kind of money we made up here, and he told me. And the main selling point that he had, he said, if you can survive in North Dakota winter, you can survive anywhere. Yeah. It's a harsh winter here. Yeah. I came up here thinking the streets were paved to gold. 
maybe at one time they were. I'm going to tell you they're not now. The main thing that I try to tell people before they come up here, and I have gave my nephew this same advice, there is work up here. It's a place to stay is where your problem is because I've seen in my two years alone maybe a dozen people die from this cold. Yep. Don't think this is quick, easy money. It's not. Yeah. Like um, if you came up here during the springtime, you know, you know that may help you out, but, but we're in October. That's where we're at now. I came from Florida. I came from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. I came up here in November, and... When I left my home, it was 84 degrees. <laughs> when I got up here, it was 3 degrees. So that shows you wherever you're from, it's a little different animal up here. <laughs> the coldest I've ever worked in in this environment up here is negative 43. I was in a bucket truck about 20 feet in the air working on a pumping unit, changing a belt in minus 38 degree weather. So if you think it's easy money, come on guys. Easy money. That means you have the scully hood on? Like, like I had like, everything <laughs> on. Everything on. Yeah, because uh, cause I got to get some of that stuff when I go home. Because I got all my winter stuff back uh, at home. Come prepared. That's yes. the If I gave anybody advice, come with a plan. Don't come up here thinking these streets are gold. Don't yeah. think that they everybody's standing on a street corner handing out $100 bills because it ain't happening. All right, all right, man, you're from Florida. So, so if you want to tell... You know, a couple of people, you know, back home, hey, you know, you know, you know, you, know yep. so you can tell them look to, to look for the video because I'm going to name it like, a, you know, what you want to name it like you want it like, you know, your, okay. your first name and yep. then like the last letter right. of your last name that yep. way they can look for it. And hi, Penny. Hi, Lois. Hi, the world. Hi, all my fishing buddies, anglers, beachside grill. Love y'all. And um, do you have any more advice for somebody that's coming up here? I, I would say this. Uh. I don't know how you feel about it, but if you if you if you can get a van and come up here in a van and kind of you know you know like box bed it, you know. But it's just it, if you're not used to that kind of lifestyle, yeah. I would try it at home first. Get you a van, see if you're comfortable in it. I've seen people come. I've seen it as soon as people come up here, spend one day and go back home. It's that kind of lifestyle here. Yeah, because I've seen plenty of people come up here through the oh. van center, and I don't know where they're at now. Yeah. I can't tell you, I, I don't start talking to people until they've been here six months. I don't even try to remember their name because you yeah. see people come and people go so quick. Yeah. Also, look out for hustlers. Yeah, there's, there's a lot, there's of, those a lot of those out here. Yes. Yeah. And one advice, you can call a male chauvinist if you want. Ladies, this ain't the place for you because I've seen some beautiful little girls come up here, bright-eyed and innocent and everything, and get turned out doing tricks for meth. Sorry, yeah, call it chauvinist yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah. So, so really be careful and really, you know, really be on your p's and q's because you know there's a lot of opportunity up here, but there's a uh, there's also opportunity for others to take advantage. You know, just just I'm just being realistic about it. I mean, this is this is planet Earth. It's the only one we live on. So this is this is where it is. And another thing I said, one of the, one of the only skill sets you've got to have up here in Williston, North Dakota, is a strong back and a weak mind, and ain't afraid to work. That's it. That's it. At least have that. At least have that. If you if you got other skills, that's great. If you got CDL welding, and I know you got a carpentry or I've got or, I've got oil experience. I've got welding experience, mechanic. Exactly. I've and I came up here. I lucked up. I came up here with a job, but then I did get laid off the Monday after Fourth of July. It is uh, October 9th right now. Yeah, 9th. October 9th and everything, and jobs that was offered to me at over $30 plus an hour, they're wanting to pay you 16 and $17 an hour for now yep. because the oil market's low. And, and anybody who was here when they were making that money, more than likely they got laid off or, or something happened or... I can tell you, 4th of July, the Monday after 4th of July, I, I lost a job. I was making 28 bucks an hour with all the overtime I could handle. I was mad when my paychecks were under $1,000. Mad. Yeah, because you look at it, you come all the way from down there, come all the way up here. But and now I will let me say one bright thing about this. I came up here two years ago. I owed money. I owed over twenty thousand dollars on my boat. I owed over seven years on my house. As of January of this year, my boat's been paid off. I bought a seventy-seven Harley Davidson, and I owed twenty-one months on my. Uh, thank you. On my uh, mortgage now.
Okay. So you come up here, you can spend a lot of money too. What I did, I did it a little smarter than most. A lot of people come up here, spend the money as quick as they make it. Because yeah. it's easy to make big money and spend big money. You know, so when you come up here, just save it, be smart, do the intelligent thing, mm -hmm. and just and, and just think about things in the long run. Think about things a year or two years from now. You know, where you want to be versus, you know, just where you are and where you're at now. You know, so really do your research. You can watch these videos. You can watch other videos. You can ask me questions. I'll, I'll either type out the answer or I'll, or I'll make another video. Mm -hmm. I know you got to go, man. I got to go, my brother. Thank Have you. a good one. And I appreciate that. Not a problem. JPTV3000. See y'all later. Thank you, man. Bye, brother. Edward Sanchez. Edward Sanchez. Okay. Yes, man, appreciate that, bro. Thank you for your time and what brought you to North Dakota. Well, in 2012, when I started noticing about North Dakota, I was a little bit difficult to come up here. I was working offshore in Louisiana. And as years go by, 12, 13, 14, 15, I was feeling the pressure that I was losing hours of the jobs in Louisiana and uh, got to a point that I had to make a move. If not, I'll lose a lot of opportunities up in North Dakota. So finally I came up here with a crew. And when I came up here in 2014, it was just about almost done and there was, it was, there was work. It's just it was freezed a little bit. And uh, I was trying to find a place to crash and so I can find a job. And I did got a job, but there was no place to stay. I was staying in, in the van. And then uh, I finally said, nah, I'm gonna have to start looking for a place because it was getting cold. And I would take showers and, tra and uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, gas station pay. And there was traffic and then a lot of traffic to take wait your turn and uh, the company I was working they had a man camp but there was no place to stay it was work I was working but there was no man camp for a space and again it was a little bit difficult to find a place but there was plenty work there was jobs that they were asked you do you can recommend one of your partners or friends and uh, I decided to stop for a little bit and and go back to Louisiana and then come back in 2015 and when 2015 that's when I realized there was a little bit more work for anybody who wanted to come up here whether it's construction fracking uh, water transfer um, regular su supermarkets warehouses it was a lot of work still and to this day 2019 this still work I made it through, I paid my bills, I was in a deep, deep broad bottom on financial and, and if I didn't, if it wasn't for J, uh, JV 3000, uh, 3, I'd probably be in <laughs> bad situation and I made it by looking at the recommendations that other people was talking about. I mean, I didn't get the jobs that people were talking about, but I found an op opportunity. And the opportunity was there, it's just you got to come up here. I came with a little money and I found a place to put, put my head and crash in. Brought my wife here, she found a job. I took care of my bills. I was in really, I mean, I, 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 if I look back, if it wasn't for JV 3000, I don't know. I, it's a blessing that, that I came up here. I found a job. The company I work for, they take care of me. They take, right now, we're in December, oh, in November the 15th, 16th, or 14th, 15th today. And uh, I'm still happy. I'm not going nowhere in another five years. I'm glad I'm up here. There's work here. The economy is a little bit slow, but there's work if, if you want it. If you want it, you gotta come up here, find a place, so you can bring your family or for yourself. There's work here if you want it. It doesn't come to you, you just gotta come up here, take that sacrificing, come up here. There's opportunities there. It's just, you gotta make that effort. If you don't make that effort, it doesn't, it doesn't fly to you the jobs.
you gotta make that effort. And believe me, I was in a. I owe money to child support. I owe I owe money to the tax on on state department. I owe money all the way back to 2011. Uh, and um, if it wasn't again, and I repeat it again, for the news that JV 3000 gives out to the public, I don't know. I'll probably be in a shithole again for quite a while. And um, I'm glad I'm up here. I love uh, Williston. I like Wofford, the other city that's next to Williston. It's country, but flat, beautiful air, cold. It's, it's, if you make an effort, it could be your city. It's quiet. I mean, it has its issues, like any other city, crime rate. It's quiet. It, it, I mean, it's just a small town with small businesses are trying to bring in, into the, uh, the community work for the workforce, for the people who want to work. There's work here if you want it. Back in Louisiana, my wife uh, will probably be making less than what she was making now. So I have saved money, bought a car for my wife, paid my daughter's education. My college daughter's paid up front. I don't even have to worry. Again, if it wasn't for Williston or Waffer for the jobs, the economy they have up here, I don't know. Uh, the I, I miss Louisiana. I miss New York City. I'm thankful that I came to this city. It's quiet, but hey, I'm thankful. I'm 100% thankful for what I came up here. And once again, JB3000, if it wasn't for your news, I don't know. I, I can't read the past. I can only look forward what's going to happen. I pass it on to the next person. I, I told my friends, hey, man, you want a job? Come and get it. It's here. You just have to come up here however you can make it. You make it here. It's it not, it's not a handout. There's no hand. You gotta come here and work. You know, um, it's they just did a new apple. They throw in uh, a million dollars. They just uh, they're gonna start a new school. They're gonna throw in a million dollars there. Um, you just gotta come up here and see for where you're on two eyes. It's just like I said in the beginning when I was a. Uh, a little bit step ago about it. Like, nah, nah, nah. I got on, on the train and track right there. Got it here with just a, a, a book bag and 300, 250 bucks in my name. And uh, I remember I was here and, and I uh, sometimes I, um, I says, damn, I made it. This city has a lot of opportunity if you want it. If you want it, come and get it. It doesn't fly to you the job. You just gotta come and get it. The economy is still good here. It's, it's solid. It's not like it used to be. Major traffic or jobs. Well, <laughs> you get fired. You get to get hired the next day on another company. And I remember it used to be like that. Friends with mine would get quit and then go across the street and get hired. But it's not like it was before. But now is it calm? It's you know, you gotta pass your drug test. You gotta pass some reading uh, skills. The the background checks as long as you're not some lunatic running around, with, they'll give you a job. You know, and if you don't know the job, they'll, they'll train you. But you gotta have the right attitude to come to work. You don't got a license, hey, uh, you're just gonna have to f find a job that they don't require you with a license. But there's jobs that will give you an opportunity if you just if you're trying to make it. There is jobs here, and if you don't like it, you can go right back where you came from and start over again. That's all I got to say. Thank you, JV3000, for your news. And I'll pass it on to the next man who tells me and question me how I'm making it. I tell him, come up here and come and get it. It ain't for free, the job, but you got to come and get it yourself and find, fill out the application. Over here, they don't like to talk on the phone too much. They want you, They want to see you. So, you know, come with a little extra money. And just in case you don't like it, you can go right back, back where you came from. Thank you, JB3000. And I hope that in 2020, you'll be successful in your business, in your news, and you can pass yourself another victory of your uh, broadcast business. Thank you, JB3000. Man, appreciate that.